applies to your handout. As I said, in terms of specific sectors, how much time do we have? I thought it was just about an hour or so, right? No. We have about an hour. Okay, so these are uh, the opportunities, as I said, and there's going to be a huge bit in the process of catch up as per capita income rises and we sort of hopefully move towards um, China's uh, level. And this is a, a huge increase in uh, opportunities in, in business volume for different sectors that we uh, estimated. I don't want to spend too much. Opportunities in physical infrastructure. I mean, the big problem, I know, this is, this, this, this is your first day in Delhi. Yeah. Delhi has very fancy roads, but don't get seen. I mean, if you, I mean, most other cities don't have roads like this. That's a huge problem of uh, both urban and non urban infrastructure. Uh, spans the entire range from you know, power to roads to port facilities and so on. Some of these issues have got resolved, but there's still a lot to be done. And this gives you again the kind of uh, demand uh, that is likely to uh, emerge if uh, by the 2025, uh, if current rates of growth was the case. And the kind of growth in terms of multiple factors uh, that are intended to involve. So, again, from a business perspective, from the perspective of the. Sorry, yeah. Um, could you give an example of what has happened in terms of infrastructure in the last, let's say, five years? What has been developed and because it seems like it's going pretty slow, could you give some uh, uh, flavor on that? Uh, yeah, bottom line, it's going pretty slow. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I think let me sort of give you specific examples. I think one of the, one of the areas where we had a huge uh, shortage was in airport facilities. That I think has been resolved to a great degree, and we now have some of the best mid sized airports anywhere in the world. Where, uh, where have we been lacking? We've been lacking in roads where progress has been extremely slow between 1998 and uh, 2004. We had a you know, huge burst in highway building activity, after which things have slowed down. Uh, there are a number of issues involved, including the uh, aspect of malfeasance that I referred to. Having said that, I mean, things have, have slowed down. In power generation, we uh, managed to rope in a lot of you know, private sector producers. Uh, a lot of projects uh, are uh, still being, I mean, uh, are close to completion. That should uh, help in augmenting our sort of generation facilities. There's a problem with transmission and distribution, uh, which hasn't attracted enough uh, power. Is related again to you know other issues. There are a lot of populist policies involved in power. For instance, we give free power to farmers, uh, and this is uh, this is seen to be a seen to be by political parties as a the formula for winning elections. So you just promise me three power to power. So as you can understand, uh, this is a very large uh, uh, transmission and distribution losses. Part of it is because of almost institutionalized tech. Right? Uh, I think the, the ratio has gone down. We're talking about 20 to 20 percent of power simply sold transmission. Because the incentive is a, is a transmission and distribution loss. But the reality is that it's not a bit of by drawing power from land. So there is an underlying issue of um, market-related tariffs, which are which part of the market. Again, quite a bit of progress is being made on, on the policy side there, but not enough. Uh, so roads uh, post, yes, we managed to get in a couple of uh, fairly big uh, foreign collaborators, or foreign investors. The Dubai Sports Authority came in, set up a couple of sports. PNO has been there. So I, I would think that for airports and sports, the situation is better. Roads going very slow, one hopes that things will improve. The big opportunities are, I think, urban infrastructure, uh, where, again, I mean, there's been, uh, there hasn't been much traction. 
effects of cities like Delhi. So there, I think there, there is a serious effort to um, you know, get put this together. The other areas are where we sort of treated um, uh, some resources of virtually free resources, water, for instance, where uh, I think a lot of Asian economies anticipate a water crisis going forward. So there is a slow move towards uh, you know, better um, pricing of the water. Uh, so I think if you're looking at it from a long-term perspective, you know, water is one area where you could have uh, you have a lot of opportunities. Uh, we have large, we have discovered large uh, uh, the basis of natural gas, where there is a lot of exploration and uh, sure. Yeah. <coughs> I have a question related to the infrastructure. You say that the growth will come from the internal market mainly. Is it then roads more important than airports? I mean, I, I cannot see how you do a big internal market without having proper infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, that's really the challenge. I mean, if you, there, there is an internal market, but accessing the internal market would depend on infrastructure. So it's sort of a, a chicken and egg problem. And I think what has happened in the policy terms of the team is that the realization that the fact that an internal market exists and can potentially grow does not necessarily guarantee access to the market. It's only setting in, and, and quite a bit is happening there. But it's clearly not enough. So as I said, that you know, I, I presented the opportunity and potential earlier, but there are, as I said, it's not an automatic process. There are steps that we need to take. Are we taking those steps uh, uh, efficiently enough or adequately enough? Perhaps not. We have a long way to go, and that's really the problem with India. And you will often, if you are investing in India or if you're doing business in India, it can be a very, very frustrating experience because you need a lot of patience. You know, to put up with the lack of activity, effort, response in, in issues that are fairly obvious. But that's the way it was. It, uh, it's described as a cost of democracy. I don't know whether that's um, uh, a fair characterization, but that's just the way it was. But having said that, I mean, there, will, there, there are opportunities in infrastructure. Things do move, whatever the pace is. Things have happened. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Eric. I come from Brazil. Uh, Mr. Barua, my question is regarding the social aspect. Due to the high social inequality currently here in India, do you see future uh, risks of uh, tension, social tension? And if yes, how to address these this challenges and this social tension? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's a very interesting sort of question, especially since we got to Brazil. Because I think what has happened, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I mean, that one of the things that you know, Latin America has got right in this decade, particularly Brazil, has been um, to address these issues of social inequality far more effectively than it has in the past. And I presume that you know, Lula's popularity uh, stems partially from the fact that he was seen very differently to sort of address these issues. Um, yes, I think um, this, is a, this is a very major issue, not just in India, but also in China. And both the Chinese government and the Indian government are beginning to show a softer face. In India, there is now a complete obsession with this idea of inclusive growth, where uh, how, how is inclusive growth working? We have um, a job guarantee program which has started a little bit better, which is still patchy, but seems to be successful. Uh, whatever evidence that I've seen is that it is sort of uh, helping in providing um, employment to the really, really indigent and poor in the rural area. Um, what else? On the financial side, uh, as for a bank, there is a huge attempt to reach out and provide uh, credit to credit, uh, banking facilities, etc., to the really poor. Uh, there, there are various models that are being followed. Unfortunately, unlike in Brazil or you know, a couple of other countries around the world, a micro credit hasn't been that much of a success here. But uh, other dimensions of banking, there is a huge influence again. So, yes, I think 
there is a huge effort to collect all these inequalities, uh, both in um, India particularly, but China also seems to be uh, trying to do that because the possibility of this huge social tension. And this inequality uh, thing is related again to the uh, demographic profile uh, change. Because all the young people, if they come into the work, I mean, if they are eligible to uh, enter the workforce, do not get jobs, get thrown out, and you have these, you know, 50 billionaires controlling 80 percent of our resources. That things you know, really sort of hot up. Uh, I think the government, so politically it is imperative, and that's the important thing about democracy like India or Brazil. Politically it is imperative to address this in, in two different issues, and, and that's what we've done.